everybody welcome back to the seesaw and another week of meals now if you watched our grocery haul and meal plan <clears throat> you will know that we're planning this week to use up some of the simply cook and spice and tice kits that we've got lying around from other boxes that we haven't used yet um it, just in an effort to get them used up and decide whether we like the dish or not so um we're starting out the week with a korean dish and it's called, and I'm apologising now to any of our viewers that know Korean or are Korean because I'm probably going to completely mess up your language this evening. Um, but this dish is called bokumbap. I think that's how it's pronounced, bokumbap. Um, and it literally means fried rice in Korean. Um, and this was a kit from Simply Cook. You can see it is a vegetarian friendly meal that serves four. Um, and the only ingredients you need to provide for it are some rice, long grain rice, some white cabbage, spring onions, eggs, and some vegetable oil. Now we have added to it the shredded up cooked chicken that was left over from yesterday's roast to make it non-vegetarian. Um, and we, uh, and that's really just to bulk it out and because we quite like it with chicken in it. So all this is is a spicy fried rice with cabbage um, that the, you then traditionally serve with a fried egg on the top. So in the little um, uh, kit from Simply Cook, we had three little pots as always, and those were in this one garlic paste. Again, apologies for the uh, the language pronunciation. Gochujang, gochujang, which is a red chili paste, and the other one is doenjang, which is a soybean paste. So those just all combine with your cooked rice, you um, the garlic paste you cook with the cabbage. Once that's softened up nicely after a few minutes in the in the skillet or wok, you take that out, add in your cooked rice, let that just cook for a little bit just to get a little bit browned on the bottom. Then you stir through the two pastes, the chilli paste and the soybean paste, along with your cooked cabbage, um, spring onions and anything else you're adding, so meat or other vegetables. So then you serve it with a fried egg on the top. That's the traditional way of serving it. Now, Caleb's is a medium fried egg. Mine is a runny fried egg because I absolutely want it to burst as I, as I open it and work through the, the rice and the, and the vegetables and chicken. Tony's will are hard cooked eggs because he doesn't like any runny in his yolks at all. Now, recently somebody asked us about our fried eggs and how do they always look so perfectly round? I think it might have been Isora. And it's because we have this little tiny pan. So you can see that compared to our bowls. It is teeny tiny. It's just enough to cook one egg. And as there are only three of us, I never cook more than four eggs usually. So I don't mind cooking them individually. If you were cooking for a lot of people, you'd need several of these on the go or it wouldn't work. Um, but it does work for us. I got this in Aldi. You can see it's very well used. At some point, I picked it up in Aldi's middle aisle. Um, and it is just the perfect size for a perfectly fried egg. Um, <clears throat> and it's it's non-stick coating, so even though I put a little spray of oil in it, it doesn't need much. It t comes out perfectly, flips perfectly. Um, we are just going to have some tortilla wraps on the side with this. But off to enjoy this to start our week of meal kits or seasoning kits um, to make our dinner. So we'll be back tomorrow with kit number two. Hi everybody, so it's Tuesday night and day two of our week of eating up our meal kits is another Simply Cook kit and this one is Mexican Pork One Pot. So this is another four serving meal. Um, heartwarming One Pot makes for a mild but flavourful and easy dinner, perfect for families. Rice, pork, black beans and a blend of Mexican stock and spices. Simmer together before being tossed with spring onion slices and sharp apple cubes. It's everything you'd want in a burrito without the additional carbs. Garnish it to taste and top with a drizzle of sour cream and some lime juice. So this was another really simple one. It took about half an hour to make. It's 645 calories per serving. Um, and all you need is pork mince, basmati rice, some black beans, some Granny Smith apples and spring onions. And then from the cupboard, just a little bit of olive oil and some sugar. And so the three little pots in this one are smoky chipotle paste, roasted whole spices and Mexican stock pot. You can see the date is February. Things like that don't bother me for this sort of thing. Um, we're a little bit late using it, but it's absolutely fine. It, and this is one where I wish you had smelly, smelly vision, smelly YouTube, 
because um, this actually smells delicious. So you can see the chunks of apple in there. It's pork mince um, with rice, black beans, and then lots of seasonings. And I'm just going to top mine now. There are some tortillas, which Tony will probably have with his to make it kind of burrito style. But I've just got some sour cream to drizzle over the top. And I've got a lime that I'm just going to half and sprinkle a little lime juice over it as well. Um, but really looking forward to this one because the smell is absolutely... It's making me hungry just smelling it. It's one of those kind of smells. So looking forward to trying this Mexican one pot from um, Simply Cook, uh, Mexican pork one pot. Hey everybody, so it's Wednesday night, moving on to night three of our meal kit week. Um, this is the Spice and Tice Chicken Jalfrezi kit. So Spice and Tice do a number of really tasty seasoning kits. Now these just come in packets of it's powdered seasoning. Um, the Jalfrezi has two different ones in there. So there's one that you use to marinate some chicken. And then you cook that off in the pan with some chopped onion, a bit of garlic and ginger. And then you add in some chopped tomato. So like a regular tomato just chopped up um, with some larger pieces of chopped pepper and onion. The second pack of the seasoning. Um, then you add a bit of tomato puree and a bit of water. And I always liken Jalfrezi to like an Asian Indian flavor of um, fajitas because you have the chunks of vegetables with the chicken. So it's very similar to fajitas, but obviously without the Mexican seasoning or spices. So we've got that tonight with some pilau rice and some naan bread. So far this week, everything has been tasty. That one pot Mexican pork last night, I really enjoyed that. The apple just added a really nice crunch to it. A really kind of a bit of a, almost, a, it was Grand Smith apple, so they weren't sweet, but almost a sweetness to it but it was really tasty that might be close to one of my favorite kits from simply cook so far so we've got a couple more nights to go of these kits and then we'll have used everything we've got before we move on to a first try of a gusto box next week so for now we're off to enjoy our jalfrezi hi everybody so it is thursday i think so thursday night um, and on to the next night of our week of meal kits. We've got chicken makani tonight, which is butter chicken, essentially. So it says on there, um, with roots in Punjab in northern India, rumour has it that the famous Moti Mahal restaurant in Delhi designed this delicious curry. Also known as butter chicken, this dish is traditionally made by cooking the chicken in a hot oven or a tandoor and then simmering it in the curry sauce, which is then garnished with fenugreek leaves. So a four serving one, this has quite high calorie count, 750 because it's got butter and cream in it. Um, the three little pots were the butter chicken spices, the makani curry paste and the fenugreek leaves, which were dried like a dried herb. Um, now we have had a lot of rice this week. I think every meal kit that we've had was a rice based one. Um, rice is not Tony's favourite thing, although he has coped well with it this week because it's been in lots of different varieties. Um, so here is the butter chicken. So it's got the nice pieces of chicken thigh meat in there. It's got some chopped onions or sliced onions. Then it's got passata. It's got all the seasonings. And then it's got some cream and some butter added at the end. And then I've cooked some pasta to have with it just for something different. Again, as I always say on the channel, um, just combine the, um, the you know, flavours, the cuisines. Don't be stuck that you can only have curry with rice. Have curry with a jacket potato. Have curry over mashed potatoes have curry with pasta so we're having it with pasta tonight and then I also had some of the my favorite deli kitchen flatbreads left in the freezer so I've taken them out and I've just warmed them through and they're almost like a chapati kind of bread or um a naan bread um somewhere in between the two actually um so we're going to have those on the side and then I've just got some chopped tomato and cucumber to sprinkle over the top but that is our one from no two we've got two more kits left for the next two nights and then we'll be moving on to our gusto box which is due to be delivered on monday um so next week i'm planning four meals from the gusto box and then three i've got three other meals planned for the other three nights um so grocery haul this week will be a bit different in that i'll do the grocery haul for the three nights that i'm doing plus breakfast lunches snacks and then I'll unbox the Gusto box when that arrives and then put those both together to show what meals we're making and what um, what uh, groceries and supplies we have in for those meals. But for now, we're off to enjoy our chicken makani. Hi, 
everybody so it's Friday night and it's our one from last of our simply cook little boxes this week and this tonight we've got the katsu chicken katsu curry um, it's Japanese style curry um, and it's, it uses carrots and onions to give it a bit of sweetness and you use breaded chicken so I've used pre um, pre breaded chicken I just bought it that way from the store the curry sauce is quite thick um, I, use, I followed the same the directions we just thickened up a bit more. Um, the three little um, packs in here are pickled radish mix, which I've actually mixed with cucumber. It just gives the cucumber a little bit of spice. So you mix it with some water, put your sliced cucumber in, and it's got some chili and um, flakes and things like that in it. Then you've got your katsu curry paste, and you've got your gochujang. gochujang. I had that same problem earlier in the week, sauce, um, which is the spice. So I've got some of that in the curry, as they suggest, and then the rest is just mixed up here with some water, which can be drizzled over as a kind of a hot sauce. So got that with a little bit of basmati rice and some steamed green vegetables. So off to enjoy this on a Friday night. Hi everybody, so we are ending our um, week of using up some of the little seasoning kits that we had left around. Um, with a, it's often used as a breakfast food, but we're in Scotland for kedgeri. So um, this is com combines, if you don't know what kedgeri is, it combines smoked fish with rice, peas, and curry style seasonings. And then you typically have it, traditionally have it with eggs, with boiled eggs on the side. Um, so in the kit, this was another um, simply cooked kit. And you can see it's smoked haddock, haddock kedgeri. I actually had some smoked bassa fillets in the freezer. Um, and so I have used, there was two bassa smoked fillets and one bassa unsmoked. So I've used that as my combination. So again, just because it should be smoked haddock, if you've got another smoked cod or smoked bassa instead, that's absolutely fine. A white, um, firm, firm um, flesh fish that will flake easily once you've um, cooked it through. And so this was a one pot dish. It was just cooked up some spring onions with a little bit of the seasoning. So the seasoning packs I had were kedgeri stock lemon pepper mix and curry blend so i cooked some spring onions with some of the lemon pepper seasoning um, for a few minutes and then i added into that some um, basmati rice some frozen peas and the curry blend let that all come together mixed up the kedgeri stock with 400 mils of boiling water add it which and kedgeri stock is like a fish stock really so i added that in um, and then I layered the pieces of fish across the top, popped the lid on, popped it in the oven for 20 minutes. And I actually gave it another five minutes because the um, rice wasn't fully cooked all the way through. So um, I gave it another five minutes after that. While that was all cooking, I boiled up some eggs. So quite a simple supper. So it's been a nice week, just some different things that we hadn't got around to trying that we've had in different meal kits. Um, and yeah, uh, looking forward now to a new week, which will bring us a gusto box. Um, but we're going to end this week with something quite traditional for us, a roast dinner tomorrow. So we'll see you then. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Seesaw. I don't need to say that, do I? Because it's Sunday. So it's the end of the week, not the beginning of the week. Um, it's been an absolutely glorious day today. I went outside early this morning. We have um, rose bushes all along the front of our house um, between kind of our front door and the road. Um, and uh, they've had so many flowers on already this spring, but they all needed deadheading so that they would grow, regrow and get more buds. So I went out and did that this morning. And then we also have vines on the, grape vines on the front of our house. And they go, if you've ever grown a grape vine, they go absolutely crazy. They like the heat. So with the warm weather recently, and then the rain we had right before that, they started to get a bit kind of triffid like in that they looked like they were going to attack us when we walked out the front door so I trimmed those back as well then went into the back garden and trimmed um, some of the kind of low hanging branches that have grown out from a couple of our trees so I had a busy morning outside um, watched the England football game this afternoon and now we're having our dinner so we've got roast pork today now I bought a piece of pork loin from Tesco and I've always really liked their pork loin but this, I don't know what's wrong with it, it didn't carve up easily. Um, usually pork loin is nice, clean slices of meat, a bit like that on Caleb's plate. But it's kind of just broken up into chunks. Um, not sure, I cooked it exactly per the instructions on the on the packaging. Just roasted it in the oven. Um, 
but not very, and there's lots of kind of sinewy bits and fatty bits running through it, which you don't normally get with a loin. So I don't know if it was mislabeled, whether it perhaps wasn't a pork loin um, or what, but it wasn't the nice clean sliced pork that you normally get with a pork loin. So a bit disappointed, but it is roast pork and it is cooked and it is edible. Um, I've got uh, Yorkshire pudding. I've got the uh, rest of the um, Auntie Bessie's little round stuffing balls. These are the frozen ones. I've got some roasted new potatoes, the baby potatoes. These are Cornish potatoes that I got at Tesco yesterday. I just roasted those up in the active fryer along with some sliced up parsnips. And then we've got a mixture of steamed vegetables. There's cauliflower, broccoli, carrots, peas and corn. And then just some gravy over the top. So that is how we're ending our week this week. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you back here on The Seesaw soon.